Kenneth Del Vecchio has a long list of credentials. Lawyer, published author, filmmaker, actor, and now chairman to one of the most up-and-coming film festivals around. Miss Prosecutor, I am the author of the best-selling legal books in the country. The New Jersey Criminal Code Book, the New York Criminal Code Book, the National Criminal Code Book. I'm a judge, I'm a former prosecutor, and I'm a criminal defense attorney that's tried over 400 cases. On top of that, I've taught well over a thousand police officers, attorneys, and judges criminal law at very high-priced seminars. And I'm a best-selling criminal suspense novelist. And I'm a critically acclaimed filmmaker who's written, produced, and directed over 20 feature films that star several Academy Award and Emmy winners and nominees. What's the relevance of that? They all have central themes of criminal law. All right, Kenneth Alvecchio, you're representing Justin Bieber here. Which one are you most concerned about? Well, none of the judges should be swayed by what any of the other uh, cases are about. Uh, uh, all three of them are very minor cases. The DWI case is, is going to be a tough case for them to prove. You have to find out, you know, how, how long the marijuana was in his system for, what the quantity is, and the same thing for the Xanax. Those things are very tough to prove. His admission that he was, uh, you know, smoking all night long is his greatest detriment in that matter. But it's not going to be as easy a case as people think that it will be. The eggs case is nonsense. Who cares if it's currently uh, listed as a felony in California? It's going to get downgraded back to the municipal court. The case is a joke. Slapping his, uh, the limo driver in the back of the head, well, it's one person's word versus another, so that's per se reasonable doubt. I don't think he's got too much to worry about altogether. It's just that the kid acts like an idiot. Well stated, Your Honor. Well stated. There, Look, I'm going to tell you that absolutely under no circumstances under United States law and the treaty itself should she be extradited. Why? Well, uh, the treaty 1983 is when it was uh, agreed upon between the two countries and a cap compact between several other, other countries has a provision in it, Article 6. In Article 6, it says specifically where there's double jeopardy, there is no extra extradition. Now, some legal analysts like uh, Alan Dershowitz wrongfully concludes that because the Italian government deems that there has not been a final resolution to this case, that it's not double jeopardy. That's wrong, though. The proper scope to view this under is the United States laws, and this is double jeopardy. I, you know, I'm thinking here as I stand here, being given this marvelous honor from, from my friend Kenny Del Vecchio, uh, such an extraordinary man, we all know that. I've worked with Kenneth Del Vecchio on several movies. The man is honest, hardworking, talented. Mr. Winthrop, I reviewed your arguments, and Ms. Templeton, I've listened to your arguments. And I have to tell you, Ms. Templeton, that the defense attorney, he makes a lot of sense. You make zero sense. Why? This case is the classic example of the he said, she said. It's one person's word versus another's. And when you have one person's word versus another, that's per se reasonable doubt. I don't know how you can look at it any other way. You put on one witness during this case, and that witness said that Mr. Winthrop's client assaulted him. Mr. Winthrop put on one witness, his client. His client said that I did not assault him. There's no physical evidence. There are no eyewitnesses. There are no audio tapes, no videotapes. No confessions or admissions of any kind. It's just one person's word versus another. And that's why I went to law school, to try to stop these kind of injustices, to try to stop overzealous prosecutors like you who are just trying to rack up convictions and make cases that are out of nothing. Kenneth, legal or not, you agree? No, not at all. It's totally incorrect. There's no crime here whatsoever. The best that a prosecutor could point to is the terroristic threat statute. And in order for there to be a conviction under terroristic threats, the crime has to be imminent. It has to be immediately be able to be carried out. And a reasonable person has to believe that it can be carried out. The congressman used qualitative statements here. He said, if you do that again, I'll throw you off. Or I should do this to you. I should break you in half if you ask me these questions again. 
there's a reasonable person isn't going to believe that this threat was imminent. Even more so, he did not threaten to kill is what terroristic threats uh, provides. And also, assault absolutely is not a valid statute here. For assault, he has to commit bodily harm or he has to, or he has to carry it out. So no, no crime here. All right. And we want to bring in Kenneth Del Vecchio. You're also a former judge. So talk to us about the, the charges of the truck driver itself and what does that mean? Well, you know, I think we have to be concerned about whether or not this is a knee-jerk reaction. Mm -hmm. Clearly, we had a tragic accident that occurred here. The question is, was this criminal? Uh, the driver is charged under the death by auto statute in New Jersey, commonly known as vehicular homicide. Mm -hmm. It's not enough just simply that somebody was killed during an accident that somebody caused. It's not even enough if there was negligent behavior. Does that require intent? <coughs> Do you have to, is there an intent element? Absolutely. That's what exactly it is in criminal law. There's mens rea, right, yeah. which is criminal intent. It's required in the death by auto statute for there to be reckless driving. And recklessness is a very high standard to meet in driving. It's, you know, people commonly get tickets for careless driving, and then there's reckless driving. Reckless driving is something like going 130 miles per hour while well, eating clear. a lobster you, tail. You, Why? Because criminal law is gradated purposeful knowledge, reckless behavior. This is recklessness. And recklessness is gauged against foreseeable conduct, like Steve says. However, is it reasonably foreseeable by him just driving by and yelling at somebody that they're going to topple over and get serious physical injury? I don't see that. That vision and that concept based on excellence and integrity was birthed by one man and his vision for this festival. And that man is the chairman and the founder of the Hoboken International Film Festival, Kenneth Del Vecchio. I would like to give special thanks to festival chairman Kenneth Del Vecchio. I told him on the set of Scavenger Killers that he's the only judge I ever agreed with in a personal conversation. He's got some great views about freedom and liberty. And writing and producing a movie like Scavenger Killers makes him a little bit nuts. I'm so muscular. I'm so beautiful, I'm so glad I came into my life. Your case is dismissed. That's interesting. That may be one of the um, biggest issues for Justin Bieber, uh, Kenneth. The fact that if he continues to rack up uh, problems with the law, at some point he may lose his right to be here lawfully in the United States. Yeah, let, let, let me weigh in on this. Uh, you know, I make movies for a living. I've made over 20 pretty sizable movies with all kinds of, you know, Academy Award and Emmy winners and nominees in them. And some of these people are, are real pains in the butt. So that's the problem. What happens here, witch hunts and crazes come out of this. And any kind of conduct where somebody sounds like that they're an idiot it gets criminalized. You can't criminalize idiotic if behavior. If you're threatened to kill people, you got to suffer the consequences. He didn't threaten you threaten to kill them. There's no but if you're going to run over a cyclist and he you hear him hit the gas, and there's he's, no protected he's free slamming the gas pedal, you will kill that cyclist if you run him over. Terroristic threats requires that there has to be imminent danger in place and that a reasonable person right. would think it I'm could be carried out. And let's bring back in our dream team. you got a great guy here in, in, in Ken Novello. An incredible writer. We'll get some answers to that from uh, former Judge uh, Kenneth Del Vecchio. Joining me now, Judge Kenneth Del Vecchio, a former prosecutor. As a former judge, if this case came in front of me, I would actually toss it. But I want to tell you something about both these cases and was doing something which is constitutionally protected, talking. The government will put together a case, get 40, 50, 60 counts against somebody. Your client. He's basically on career criminal status. There's going to be a plea deal where they're going to enter guilty plea. No, but he didn't actually put anybody in substantial risk of serious physical injury. Thank Chairman Dilbeck. He is a man you can see in the movies he's involved with, the friends he has, and in his choosing military. He has a great mind and he also has a big heart. He's made over 15 acclaimed movies written several novels and legal books. Kenneth Del Vecchio founded one of the country's top film festivals. He's an attorney who's tried over 400 cases. And the man's a former judge. And oh, so intelligent. What all this means is, is that I'm probably not just one of the top two or three criminal law experts in the state of New Jersey, but one of the top two or three criminal law experts in the country. 